Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to explore the chromosomal basis of inheritance, which is going to focus mainly on the work of Thomas Hunt Morgan, who was the first scientist to link a specific gene to a specific chromosome. And to do so, he used a, a model organism called Drosophila melanogaster, or the common fruit fly. Now, sorry about that. Now, the main ideas of this uh, video cast are going to be that Mendelian inheritance patterns are caused by the behavior of chromosomes, okay, specifically the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis one um, of um, sexual cell division. Uh, number two, sex-linked genes exhibit unique patterns of inheritance. So we're going to look at genes that are linked to the sex chromosomes. Third, linked genes tend to be inherited together because they are located close to each other on the same chromosome. Fourth, alteration of chromosome number or structures causes some genetic disorders. And five, there are always exceptions to these rules. All right. Now, the chromosomal basis for Mendel's laws can be seen in this single diagram. All right. If you look up here, okay, we have a, a yellow seeded uh, round pea plant phenotype. And over here we have a green seeded wrinkled P phenotype, and producing these phenotypes, we have representation of these four different genes. Okay, we have a big Y, big Y, big R, big R. So the um, genotype of this P plant over here would be big Y, big Y, big R, big R. And over here we have the opposite. We have little Y, little Y, little R, little R. Okay, so we got the genotypes and the phenotypes. Now, as you can see during meiosis, Okay, the homologous pairs separate during meiosis one, so the gametes that this individual can make over here all are going to be big Y, big R, and over here are going to be little y, little r. All right, then we get fertilization and we produce the familiar hybrid that we've been we've already been um, talking about. All right, and then these um, because of independent assortment, we can mate two of these individuals and end up with the um, nine three three one ratio of the F two down here, this generation that we, we've talked about before. All right, so let's look at Mendel's three laws. Mendel's law of dominance, okay, if you remember, Mendel's law of dominance is covered right up here because the, um, the big Y and the little Y and the big R and the little R exhibit this characteristic. So down here in the hybrid, these, this hybrid right here, they all look yellow and round, even though their genotype is, is um, dihybrid, as opposed to the purebred parents. Okay, Mendel's law of segregation, okay, is how we get the 9331 ratio down here at the bottom. Okay, this 9331 ratio is produced by Mendel's law of segregation, working with Mendel's law of independent assortment. Okay, so I guess overall what you want to see in this on this slide is that Mendel's three laws, okay, these three laws that we just we just talked about, are actually caused by what happens during meiosis one and meiosis two and fertilization. Okay, now Thomas Hunt Morgan was born in 1866 and lived to about 1945, so he was doing most of his work in the early part of the 20th century, and he was doing his experiments using an organism called Drosophila melanogaster, all right? And, excuse me, his most famous um, paper was published in 1910. And what Morgan discovered in his um, fly experiments is the first known mutation of a wild type trait. So if you look here at this fly, this fly right here has white eyes. The normal situation for fruit flies is reddish eyes. So we're going to call this type of fly down here wild, and this is the mutant, of course, the white eye mutant. And Morgan discovered this phenotype in fruit flies, and he invented a new notation system to talk about this, okay, or to label this and do the genetic crosses. He's going to use a little w to represent the white eye gene or allele, and we're going to use a w with a superscript plus on it, a w plus to represent the wild type fly with reddish eyes. All right, so we're going to get away from the capital letters and lowercase letters that Mendel is associated with. And Morgan did some crosses with his little white-eyed male fruit fly. All right, now the fact that that little white-eyed fruit fly is male is going to be important in a few minutes. Okay, so here's his P cross, or his parental cross. He's going to cross a female with wild-type eyes to the white-eyed male mutant. All right, and what he got out of that was an F1 generation that was 100% red eyes. Okay, so far so good. So from this cross, it looks like the, the wild-type 
um, eye color is the dominant field, um, color, and the white eye mutation is recessive, kind of like what we saw in Mendelian genetics. Okay, so then he's going to cross two of these flies together, these, these hybrids that he got, and what he got for his um, F2 generation was a 3 to 2 ratio. Excuse me, a 3 to 1 ratio. All right, if you look down here at the bottom, we got 75% to 25% red eye to white eye. Sorry about that. Okay, now, so far so good. This looks like it's, it's plain old Mendelian complete dominance. But one weird thing. All the white-eyed flies that he got in the cross were male. Okay, he never got white-eyed females from this cross. So that was different. That was something that we didn't, we can't explain using Mendelian genetics with complete dominance. Okay, so what Mendel, excuse me, what Morgan discovered is that the white eye mutation only appears in male flies. He never got a white-eyed female by crossing the two F1s we just crossed. And the big question, of course, is why? All right, well, to understand this, we have to look a little bit at the karyotype of a fruit fly. Now, fruit flies have eight chromosomes, so you can say their diploid number is 2n equals 8. So that means they have four pairs of chromosomes. They have two big pair. There's one pair here in green. Here's another pair here in red. Okay, one little tiny pair, and then this weird unmatched pair here, which are the sex chromosomes. Okay, so we can look at sex chromosomes in fruit flies just like we do in humans. We could label this one the X and this one the Y, and the Y has a little hook on it. All right? Now, Morgan's hypothesis. Okay? He hypothesized that the gene controlling this white eye mutation is actually located on the X chromosome. So remember, we're going to use this little W to represent that gene, and we're going to place it right here on the X chromosome. And the Y chromosome, just like in humans, is very small and doesn't carry a copy of this gene. So this individual down here, all right, this male is little w and a Y chromosome. Okay, so he only has one copy of one allele that's controlling this white eye mutation. All right, so let's look at the cross now using the chromosome. So here's the P1 cross, okay. We have the wild female. All right, she's W plus, W plus on her two X chromosomes. We're crossing her with a white-eyed male, okay, who is, here's his X chromosome with the, with the W on it, and here's his Y, all right. And we get our, when, then, when we, then when we get our F1s, okay, down here, we're going to cross a male and a female, okay, and we get, here, here we go. So we have a female, excuse me, the male here, who is W plus Y chromosome, okay, because remember the mother, up here only has W pluses in her X. So that means one of these has to be this one right here. And of course, this one comes from the dad. And the female, of course, is going to get the white-eyed um, X chromosome from dad, which is right here. And she's going to get an, one of the X chromosomes from mom. All right, so hoping you see that. And then when we get the F2, okay, we have four possibilities. We have um, homozygous, wild, females, heterozygous wild females who are carriers for the white eye mutation. We have sons or males that are wild eye color, and we have the, the white-eyed male appearing down here. All right, so we still have a three to one ratio, but as you can see with this cross, this is why we never get female white-eyed flies from crossing these two flies right here, because there is only one copy of the white eye mutation and to make a, uh, a white eye allele. So to make a white eyed female, we need two of these. So that means the dad would have to have white eyes. And this, this dad over here has the wild color or reddish eyes. All right, so Morgan's hypothesis was that the white eye mutation is what we call a sex limited um, trait. It's limited to the male because the gene causing the white eye mutation is located on the X chromosome, all right? We now say that the eye color in fruit flies is a sex linked trait. Morgan was the first scientist to map a specific gene to a specific chromosome pair. All right, and this is important. Uh, we're going to look at X-linked genes in humans in the next video cast. Thanks for listening.